story five of day and night stories by algernon blackwood this librivox recording is in the public domain story five a desert episode one better put wraps on now the sun's getting low a girl said it was the end of a day's expedition in the arabian desert and they were having tea a few yards away the donkeys munched their barsom beside them in the sand the boys lay finishing bread and jam immense with a gliding tread the sun's ray slid from crest to crest of the limestone ridges that broke the huge expanse towards the red sea by the time the tea things were packed the sun hovered a giant ball of red above the pyramids it stood in the western sky a moment looking out of its majestic hood across the sand with a movement almost visible it leaped paused then leaped again it seemed to bound towards the horizon then suddenly was gone it is cold yes said the painter rivers and all who heard looked up at him because of the way he said it a hurried movement ran through the merry party and the girls were on their donkeys quickly not wishing to be left to bring up the rear they clattered off the boys cried the thud of sticks was heard hoofs shuffled through the sand and stones in single file the picnickers headed for Haluin, some five miles distance, and the desert closed up behind them as they went, following in a shadowy wave that never broke, noiseless, foamless, unstreaked, driven by no wind, and of a volume undiscoverable. Against the orange sunset the pyramids turned deep purple. The strip of silvery Nile among its palm trees looked like rising mist in the incredible egyptian afterglow the enormous horizons burned a little longer then went out the ball of the earth a huge round globe that bulged curved visibly as at sea it was no longer a flat expanse it turned its splendid curves were realized better put wraps on it's cold and the sun is low and then the curious hurry to get back among the houses and the haunts of men no more was said perhaps than this yet the time and place being what they were the mind became suddenly aware of that quality which ever brings a certain shrinking with it vastness and more than vastness that which is endless because it is also beginningless eternity a colossal splendour stole upon the heart and the senses unaccustomed to the unusual stretch reeled a little as though the wonder was more than could be faced with comfort not all doubtless realized it though to two at least it came with a staggering impact there was no withstanding for while the luminous greys and purples crept round them from the sandy wastes the hearts of these two became aware of certain common things whose simple majesty is usually dulled by mere familiarity neither the man nor the woman knew for certain that the other felt it as they brought up the rear together yet the fact that each did feel it set them side by side in the same strange circle and made them silent they realized the immensity of a moment the dizzy stretch of time that led up to the casual pinning of a veil to the tightening of a stirrup strap to the little speech with a companion the roar of the vanished centuries that have ground mountains into sand and spread them over the floor of africa above all to the little truth that they themselves existed amid the whirl of stupendous systems all delicately balanced as a spider's web that they were alive for a moment this vast scale of reality revealed itself then hid swiftly again behind the debris of the obvious the universe containing their two tiny yet important selves stood still for an instant before their eyes they looked at it realized that they belonged to it everything moved and had its being lived here in this silent empty desert even more actively than in a city of crowded houses the quiet nile sighing with age passed down towards the sea there loomed the menacing pyramids across the twilight beneath them in monstrous dignity crouched that shadow from whose eyes of battered stone proceeds the nameless thing that contracts the heart 
then opens it again to terror and everywhere from towering monoliths as from secret tombs rose that strange long whisper which defying time and distance laughs at death the spell of egypt which is the spell of immortality touched their hearts already as the group of picnickers rode homewards now the first stars twinkled overhead and the peerless egyptian night was on the way there was hurry in the passing of the dusk and the cold sensibly increased so you did no painting after all said rivers to the girl who rode a little in front of him for i never saw you touch your sketch-book once they were some distance now behind the others the line straggled and when no answer came he quickened his pace drew up alongside and saw that her eyes in the reflection of the sunset shone with moisture but she turned her head a little smiling into his face so that the human and the non-human beauty came over him with an onset that was almost shock neither one nor other he knew were long for him and the realization fell upon him with a pang of actual physical pain the acuteness the hopelessness of the realization for a moment were more than he could bear stern of temper though he was and he tried to pass in front of her urging his donkey with resounding strokes her own animal however following the lead at once came up with him you felt it perhaps as i did he said some moments later his voice quite steady again the stupendous everlasting thing the life behind it all he hesitated a little in his speech unable to find the substantive that could compass even a fragment of his thought she paused too similarly inarticulate before the surge of incomprehensible feelings it's awful she said half laughing yet the tone hushed and a little quaver in it somewhere and her voice to his was like the first sound he had ever heard in the world for the first sound a full-grown man heard in the world would be beyond all telling magical i shall not try again she continued leaving out the laughter this time my sketch-book is a farce for to tell the truth and the next three words she said below her breath i dare not he turned and looked at her for a second it seemed to him that the following wave had caught them up and was about to break above her too but the big-brimmed hat and the streaming veil shrouded her features he saw instead the universe he felt as though he and she had always always been together and always always would be separation was inconceivable it came so close she whispered it shook me they were cut off from their companions whose voices sounded far ahead her words might have been spoken by the darkness or by some one who peered at them from within that following wave yet the fanciful phrase was better than any he could find from the immeasurable space of time and distance men's hearts vainly seek to plumb it drew into closer perspective a certain meaning that words may hardly compass a formidable truth that belongs to that deep place where hope and doubt fight their incessant battle the awe she spoke of was the awe of immortality of belonging to something that is endless and beginningless and he understood that the tears and laughter were one caused by that spell which takes a little human life and shakes it as an animal shakes its prey that later shall feed its blood and increase its power of growth his other thoughts really but a single thought he had not the right to utter pain this time easily rooted hope as the wave came nearer for it was the wave of death that would shortly break he knew over him but not over her him it would sweep with its huge withdrawal into the desert whence it came her it would leave high upon the shores of life alone and yet the separation would somehow not be real they were together in eternity even now they were endless as this desert beginningless as this sky 
immortal the realization overwhelmed the lights of helouan seemed to come no nearer as they rode on in silence for the rest of the way against the dark background of the mokattam hills these fairy lights twinkled brightly hanging in mid-air but after an hour they were no closer than before it was like riding towards the stars it would take centuries to reach them there were centuries in which to do so hurry has no place in the desert it is born in streets the desert stands still to go fast in it is to go backwards now in particular its enormous uncanny leisure was everywhere in keeping with that mighty scale the sunset had made visible his thoughts like the steps of the weary animal that bore him had no progress in them the serpent of eternity holding its tail in its own mouth rose from the sand enclosing himself the stars and her behind him in the hollows of that shadowy wave the procession of dynasties and conquests the great series of gorgeous civilizations the mind calls past stood still crowded with shining eyes and beckoning faces still waiting to arrive there is no death in egypt his own death stood so close that he could touch it by stretching out his hand yet it seemed as much behind as in front of him what man called a beginning was a trick there was no such thing he was with this girl now when death waited so close for him yet he had never really begun their lives ran always parallel the hand he stretched to clasp approaching death caught instead in this girl's shadowy hair drawing her in with him to the centre where he breathed the eternity of the desert yet expression of any sort was as futile as it was unnecessary to paint to speak to sing even the slightest gesture of the soul became a crude and foolish thing silence was here the truth and they rode in silence towards the fairy lights then suddenly the rocky ground rose up close before them boulders stood out vividly with black shadows and shining heads a flat-roofed house slid by three palm trees rattled in the evening wind beyond a mosque and a minaret sailed upwards like the spars and rigging of some phantom craft and the colonnades of the great modern hotel standing upon its dome of limestone ridge loomed over them eloan was about them before they knew it the desert lay behind with its huge arrested billow slowly owing to its prodigious volume yet with a speed that merged it instantly with the far horizon behind the night this wave now withdrew a little there was no hurry it came for the moment no farther rivers knew for he was in it to the throat only his head was above the surface he still could breathe and speak and see deepening with every hour into an incalculable splendour it waited two in the street the foremost riders drew rein and two and two abreast the long line clattered past the shops and cafes the railway station and hotels stared at by the natives from the busy pavements the donkey stumbled blinded by the electric light girls in white dresses flitted here and there arabias rattled past with people hurrying home to dress for dinner and the evening train just in from cairo disgorged its stream of passengers there were dances in several of the hotels that night voices rose on all sides questions and answers engagements and appointments were made little plans and plots and intrigues for seizing happiness on the wing before the wave rolled in and caught the lot they chattered gaily you are going aren't you you promised oh, of course i am then i'll drive you over may i call for you all right come at ten we shan't have finished our bridge by then say ten thirty and eyes exchanged their meaning signals the group dismounted and dispersed 
arabs standing under the levick trees or squatting on the pavements before their dim-lit booths watched them with faces of gleaming bronze rivers gave his bridle to a donkey boy and moved across stiffly after the long ride to help the girl dismount you feel tired he asked gently it's been a long day for her face was white as chalk though the eyes shone brilliantly tired perhaps she answered but exhilarated too i should like to be there now i should like to go back this minute if some one would take me and though she said it lightly there was a meaning in her voice he apparently chose to disregard it was as if she knew his secret will you take me some day soon the direct question spoken by those determined little lips was impossible to ignore he looked close into her face as he helped her from the saddle with a spring that brought her a moment half into his arms some day soon i will he said with emphasis when you are ready the pallor in her face and a certain expression in it he had not known before startled him i think you have been overdoing it he added with a tone in which authority and love were oddly mingled neither of them disguised like yourself she smiled shaking her skirts out and looking down at her dusty shoes i've only a few days more before i sail we're both in such a hurry but you are the worst of the two because my time is even shorter ran his horrified thought for he said no word she raised her eyes suddenly to his with an expression that for an instant almost convinced him she had guessed and the soul in him stood rigidly at attention urging back the rising fires the hair had dropped loosely round the sunburned neck her face was level with his shoulder even the glare of the street lights could not make her undesirable but behind the gaze of the deep brown eyes another thing looked forth imperatively into his own and he recognized it with a rush of terror yet of singular exultation it followed us all the way she whispered it came after us from the desert where it lives at the houses he said equally low it stopped he gladly adopted her syncopated speech for it helped him in his struggle to subdue those rising fires for a second she hesitated you mean if we had not left so soon when it turned cold if we had not hurried if we had remained a little longer he caught at her hand unable to control himself but dropped it again the same second while she made as though she had not noticed forgiving him with her eyes or a great deal longer she added slowly forever and then he was certain that she had guessed not that he loved her above all else in the world for that was so obvious that a child might know it but that his silence was due to his other lesser secret that the great executioner stood waiting to drop the hood about his eyes he was already pinioned something in her gaze and in her manner persuaded him suddenly that she understood his exhilaration increased extraordinarily i mean he said very quietly that the spell weakens here among the houses and among the so-called living there was masterfulness triumph in his voice very wonderfully he saw her smile change she drew slightly closer to his side as though unable to resist mingled with lesser things we should not understand completely he added softly and that might be a mistake you mean she asked quickly her face grave again it was his turn to hesitate a moment the breeze stirred the hair about her neck bringing its faint perfume perfume of young life to his nostrils he drew his breath in deeply smothering back the torrent of rising words he knew were unpermissible misunderstanding he said briefly if the eye be single he broke off shaken by a paroxysm of coughing you know my meaning he continued as soon as the attack had passed you feel the difference here pointing round him to the hotels the shops 
the busy stream of people the hurry the excitement the feverish blinding child's play which pretends to be alive but does not know it and again the coughing stopped him this time she took his hand in her own pressed it very slightly then released it he felt it as the touch of that desert wave upon his soul the reception must be in complete and utter resignation tainted by lesser things the disharmony might be he began stammeringly again there came interruption as the rest of the party called impatiently to know if they were coming up to the hotel he had not time to find the completing adjective perhaps he could not find it ever perhaps it does not exist in any modern language eternity is not realized to-day men have no time to know they are alive forever they are too busy they all moved in a clattering merry group towards the big hotel rivers and the girl were separated three there was a dance that evening but neither of these took part in it in the great dining-room their tables were far apart he could not even see her across the sea of intervening heads and shoulders the long meal over he went to his room feeling it imperative to be alone he did not read he did not write but leaving the light unlit he wrapped himself up and leaned out upon the broad window-sill into the great egyptian night his deep-sunken thoughts like to the crowding stars stood still yet forever took new shapes he tried to see behind them as when a boy he had tried to see behind the constellations out into space where there is nothing below him the lights of helouan twinkled like the pleiades reflected in a pool of water a hum of queer soft noises rose to his ears but just beyond the houses the desert stood at attention the vastest thing he had ever known very stern yet very comforting with its peace beyond all comprehension its delicate wild terror and its awful message of immortality and the attitude of his mind though he did not know it was one of prayer from time to time he went to lie on the bed with paroxysms of coughing he had overtaxed his strength his swiftly fading strength the wave had risen to his lips nearer forty than thirty-five paul rivers had come out to egypt plainly understanding that with the greatest care he might last a few weeks longer than if he stayed in england a few more times to see the sunset and the sunrise to watch the stars feel the soft airs of earth upon his cheeks a few more days of intercourse with his kind asking and answering questions wearing the old familiar clothes he loved reading his favourite pages and then out into the big spaces where there is nothing yet no one from his stalwart energetic figure would have guessed no one but the expert mind not to be deceived to whom in the first attack of overwhelming despair and desolation he went for final advice he left that house as many had left it before knowing that soon he would need no earthly protection of roof and walls and that his soul if it existed would be shelterless in the space behind all manifested life he had looked forward to fame and position in this world had indeed already achieved the first step towards this end and now with the vanity of all earthly aims so mercilessly clear before him he had turned in somewhat of a nervous concentrated hurry to make terms with the infinite while still the brain was there and had of course found nothing for it takes a lifetime crowded with experiment and effort to learn even the alphabet of genuine faith and what could come of a few weeks wild questioning but confusion and bewilderment of mind it was inevitable he came out to egypt wondering thinking questioning but chiefly wondering he had grown that is more childlike abandoning the futile tool of reason which hitherto had seemed to him the perfect instrument 
its foolishness stood naked before him in the pitiless light of the specialist's decision for who can by searching find out god to be exceedingly careful of over-exertion was the final warning he brought with him and within a few hours of his arrival three weeks ago he had met this girl and utterly disregarded it he took it somewhat thus instead of lingering i'll enjoy myself and go out a little sooner i'll live the time is very short his was not a nature anyhow that could heed a warning he could not kneel upright and unflinching he went to meet things as they came reckless unwise but certainly not afraid and this characteristic operated now he ran to meet death full tilt in the uncharted spaces that lay behind the stars with love for a companion now he raced his speed increasing from day to day she as he thought knowing merely that he sought her but had not guessed his darker secret that was now his lesser secret and in the desert this afternoon of the picnic the great thing he sped to meet had shown itself with its familiar touch of appalling cold and shadow familiar because all minds know of and accept it appalling because until realized close and with the mental power at the full it remains but a name the heart refuses to believe in and he had discovered that its name was life rivers had seen the wave that sweeps incessant tireless but as a rule invisible round the great curve of the bulging earth brushing the nations into the deeps behind it had followed him home to the streets and houses of helouan he saw it now as he leaned from his window dim and immense too huge to break its beauty was nameless undecipherable his coughing echoed back from the wall of its great sides and the music floated up at the same time from the ballroom in the opposite wing the two sounds mingled life which is love and death which is their unchanging partner held hands beneath the stars he leaned out farther to drink in the cool sweet air soon on this air his body would be dust driven perhaps against her very cheek trodden on possibly by her little foot until in turn she joined him too blown by the same wind loose about the desert true yet at the same time they would always be together always somewhere side by side continuing in the vast universe alive this new absolute conviction was in him now he remembered the curious sweet perfume in the desert as of flowers where yet no flowers are it was the perfume of life but in the desert there is no life living things that grow and move and utter are but a protest against death in the desert they are unnecessary because death there is not its overwhelming vitality needs no insolent visible proof no protest no challenge no little signs of life the message of the desert is immortality he went finally to bed just before midnight hovering magnificently just outside his window death watched him while he slept the wave crept to the level of his eyes he called her name and downstairs meanwhile the girl knowing nothing wondered where he was wondered unhappily and restlessly more though this she did not understand wondered motheringly until to-day on the ride home and from their singular conversation together she had guessed nothing of his reason for being at helouan where so many come in order to find life she only knew her own and she was but twenty-five then in the desert when that touch of unearthly chill had stolen out of the sand towards sunset she had realized clearly astonished she had not seen it long ago that this man loved her yet that something prevented his obeying the great impulse 
in the life of paul rivers whose presence had profoundly stirred her heart the first time she saw him there was some obstacle that held him back a barrier his honour must respect he could never tell her of his love it could lead to nothing knowing that he was not married her intuition failed her utterly at first then in their silence on the homeward ride the truth had somehow pressed up and touched her with its hand of ice in that disjointed conversation at the end which reads as it sounded as though no coherent meaning lay behind the words and as though both sought to conceal by speech what yet both burned to utter she had divined his darker secret and knew that it was the same as her own she understood then it was death that had tracked them from the desert following with its gigantic shadow from the sandy wastes the cold the darkness the silence which cannot answer the stupendous mystery which is the spell of its inscrutable presence had risen about them in the dusk and kept them company at a little distance until the lights of helouan had bade it halt life which may not cannot end had frightened her his time perhaps was even shorter than her own none knew his secret since he was alone in egypt and was caring for himself similarly since she bravely kept her terror to herself her mother had no inkling of her own aware merely that the disease was in her system and that her orders were to be extremely cautious this couple therefore shared secretly together the two clearest glimpses of eternity life has to offer to the soul side by side they looked into the splendid eyes of love and death life moreover with its instinct for simple and terrific drama had produced this majestic climax breaking with pathos at the very moment when it could not be developed this side of the stars they stood together upon the stage a stage emptied of other human players the audience had gone home and the lights were being lowered no music sounded the critics were abed at this great game of consequences it was known where he met her what he said and what she answered possibly what they did and even what the world thought but what the consequence was would remain unknown untold that would happen in the big spaces of which the desert in its silence its motionless serenity its shelterless intolerable vastness is the perfect symbol and the desert gives no answer it sounds no challenge for it is complete life in the desert makes no sign it is four in the hotel that night there arrived by chance a famous international dancer whose dahabia lay anchored in san giovanni in the nile below helouan and this woman with her party had come to dine and take part in the festivities the news spread after twelve the lights were lowered and while the moonlight flooded the terraces streaming past pillar and colonnade she rendered in the shadowed halls the music of the masters interpreting with an instinctive genius messages which are eternal and divine among the crowd of enthralled and delighted guests the girl sat on the steps and watched her the rhythmical interpretation held a power that seemed in a sense inspired there lay in it a certain unconscious something that was pure unearthly something that the stars wheeling in stately movements over the sea and desert know something the great winds bring to mountains where they play together something the forests capture and fix magically into their gathering of big and little branches it was both passionate and spiritual wild and tender intensely human and seductively non-human for it was original taught of nature a revelation of naked unhampered life it comforted as the desert comforts it brought the desert awe into the stuffy corridors of the hotel with the moonlight and the whispering of stars yet 
behind it ever the silence of those grey mysterious interminable spaces which utter to themselves the wordless song of life for it was the same dim thing she felt that had followed her from the desert several hours before halting just outside the streets and houses as though blocked from further advance the thing that had stopped her foolish painting skilled though she was because it hides behind colour and not in it the thing that veiled the meaning in the cryptic sentences she and he had stammered out together the thing in a word as near as she could approach it by any means of interior expression that the realization of death for the first time makes comprehensible immortality it was unutterable but it was he and she were indissolubly together death was no separation there was no death it was terrible it was she had already used the word awful full of awe in the desert thought whispered as she watched spellbound it is impossible even to conceive of death the idea is meaningless it simply is not the music and the movement fill the air with life which being there must continue always and continuing always can have never had a beginning death therefore was the great revealer of life without it none could realize that they are alive others had discovered this before her but she did not know it in the desert no one can realize death it is hope and life that are the only certainty the entire conception of the egyptian system was based on this the conviction sure and glorious of life's endless continuation their tombs and temples their pyramids and sphinxes surviving after thousands of years defy the passage of time and laugh at death the very bodies of their priests and kings of their animals even their fish their insects stand to-day as symbols of their stalwart knowledge and this girl as she listened to the music and watched the inspired dancing remembered it the message poured into her from many sides though the desert brought it clearest with death peering into her face a few short weeks ahead she thought instead of life the desert as it were became for her a little fragment of eternity focused into an intelligible point for her mind to rest upon with comfort and comprehension her steady thoughtful nature stirred towards an objective far beyond the small enclosure of one narrow lifetime the scale of the desert stretched her to the grandeur of its own imperial meaning its divine repose its unassailable and everlasting majesty she looked beyond the wall eternity that which is endless without pause without beginning without divisions or boundaries the fluttering of her brave yet frightened spirit ceased aware with awe of its own everlastingness the swiftest motion produces the effect of immobility excessive light is darkness sighs run loose into enormity is the same as the minutely tiny similarly in the desert life too overwhelming and terrific to know limit or confinement lies undetailed and stupendous still as deity a revelation of nothingness because it is all turned golden beneath its spell that the music and the rhythm made even more comprehensible the soul in her already lying beneath the shadow of the great wave sank into rest and peace too certain of itself to fear and panic fled away i am immortal because i am and what i love is not apart from me it is myself we are together endlessly because we are yet in reality though the big desert brought this it was love which being of similar parentage interpreted its vast meaning to her little heart that sudden love which without a word of preface or explanation had come to her a short three weeks before she went up to her room soon after midnight abruptly unexpectedly stricken 
some one it seemed had called her name she passed his door the lights had been turned up the clamour of praise was loud round the figure of the weary dancer as she left in a carriage for her debaya on the nile a low wind whistled round the walls of the great hotel blowing chill and bitter between the pillars of the colonnades the girl heard the voices float up to her through the night and once more behind the confused sound of the many she heard her own name called but more faintly than before and from very far away it came through the spaces beyond her open window it died away again then but for the sighing of that bitter wind silence the deep silence of the desert and these two paul rivers and the girl between them merely a floor of that stone that built the pyramids lay a few moments before the wave of sleep engulfed them and while they slept two shadowy forms hovered above the roof of the quiet hotel melting presently into one as dreams stole down from the desert and the stars immortality whispered to them on either side rose life and death towering in splendour love joining their spreading wings fused the gigantic outlines into one the figures grew smaller comprehensible they entered the little windows above the beds they paused a moment watching waiting and then like a wave that is just about to break they stooped and in the brilliant egyptian sunlight of the morning as she went downstairs she passed his door again she had awakened but he slept on he had preceded her it was next day she learned his room was vacant within the month she joined him and within the year the cool north wind that sweetens lower egypt from the sea blew the dust across the desert as before it is the dust of kings of queens of priests princesses lovers it is the dust no earthly power can annihilate it too lasts forever there was a little more of it the desert's message slightly added to immortality end of story five